right here, y'all. Look right here, we're hooked up. Well, this ain't something I've seen a whole lot of the last couple days. I didn't even film an intro when I got out here, y'all, because fishing was so bad yesterday, in addition to other things, which I'll talk about here in a second when we get this fish up here. Hopefully it ain't a dang channel cat. No, old small blue cat there, but by gosh, it's a bite. Like I said, I didn't get much of that yesterday. All right, guys, there he is. Just a little tiny blue cat. Yeah, guys, like I alluded to, that blue cat right there is a welcome sight. I went out yesterday and fished and tried to film a video, and things just didn't go my way from the very start. The area I was using had a boat ramp, and when I have a boat ramp, by gosh, I use it. So I back my kayak trailer right down to the water, shoved the kayak off like I always do, and then quickly realized I had forgotten to tie my rope to it. So off went my kayak, drifted away. Well guys, sometimes you're dumb and sometimes you're an ass. And today I am a dumbass. Here's my rope and there's my kayak floating away on me. Thank goodness there is a wind blowing heading toward the bank. So, uh, Hopefully, I'm not going to have to go swimming in 50 some odd degree water because that is going to ruin my day in a hurry. Damn. Again, sometimes you're dumb, sometimes you're an ass. Today, I'm the dumbass. So after about 15, 20 minutes, the wind finally blew my kayak up on shore and I was able to get out on the water and start doing some fishing. I started out anchoring in a creek mouth with some suspended baits spent a couple hours there nothing going on so then i got out in the main channel started drifting nothing happening i finally did mark some fish i just couldn't get them to bite so i ended up going up above them anchoring down and casting my baits out to them got one small blue cat to show for it so after a few hours i was like heck with it it just ain't my day sometimes the universe will tell you it ain't happening for you on that particular day so i thought i'm gonna go home get me something to eat, regroup, and go out and hit a different body of water yesterday evening. So I went out, hit a creek, and that particular body of water, sat out there a few hours, got one channel cat to show for it. So I was like, man, yesterday just ain't my day. But these fish got to eat at some point in time, right? They got to feed. If you don't eat, you're going to starve to death. That's true whether you're a human or a fish. So these fish have to eat at some point. So I've come back out today. I'm on Fort Loudon today. This is my third body of water in two days, and I'm anchored off a point here. I'm in 36 feet, and I've got pieces of cut skipjack suspended just right off the bottom, and that little blue cat there ate one of the body pieces. So I'm gonna soak baits out here a few hours, and hopefully, hopefully we're gonna get on some fish. I mean, it can't get much worse than yesterday for me. So let me get this line rebaited, and we'll see if something bigger comes along. Oh, here goes this front rod. That's on another skipjack body piece. Man, he's swimming with it too, ain't he? All right, folks, I'm getting some action. If nothing else here, by gosh, I know these fish, they had to eat eventually. That's just a proven fact. If you don't eat, you starve to death. They went on a hunger strike yesterday, but they've, they've clearly given in today. <laughs> I could, I could state the obvious that I was probably just wrong place, wrong time, wrong bait yesterday, but I'm going to blame the fish instead. It's their fault, not mine. That's why I didn't catch them yesterday. I'm going to say somebody else untied my rope from the kayak, too. It wasn't just me forgetting to put it on. <laughs> I got real lucky, though, with that kayak. If the wind had not been blowing or been blowing the other way, I'd been out there swimming. Any other time, there'd been 5,000 bass fishermen around, but when you need one of them, by gosh. <laughs> That's a little better blue. Still no monster, but beggars can't be choosers today. I'm gonna take whatever I can get. Well, guys, there he is. You know, normally a fish like this wouldn't get me very excited, but a day like today, after having a day like yesterday, I'm thankful for any bite I can get out here. So let's let this one go. And uh, you know, sometimes you get spoiled, folks. 
you have a few good trips in a row, you're getting big fish and you get kind of spoiled and you and you and you take it for granted. And then you have a day like yesterday where things just don't go well and it kind of humbles you a little bit. You get that old humble pie and uh, brings you back down to earth. So that's where I'm at at this moment. So that's a good thing though. But I'm going to put another bait on there. We'll get another skipjack body piece. That's what that one there ate. So we'll stick it on there. That other small fish that ate that body piece a minute ago. I put a big head on there. I didn't have my dang chest cam running at the time, but I stuck a head piece on there. So I got a big head on that one, a smaller head on this rod, and then we're going to go with a uh, small to medium sized body section of skipjack on this one. So that's the plan, man. There's our next bait there, body section of the skipjack. You know, when you're having struggles catching fish, it's a good idea to mix up not only the types of your baits, but the cuts too. You know, get some small baits mixed in with your large and just kind of play around with it till you can figure out what it's going to take to catch them. So we'll keep playing with it till we get it dialed in. But like I said, these fish got to eat eventually. Oh, look at that one go. Look at that one pull, man. Look at that one go. I'll tell you what the secret to success out here is, y'all. I pull out my jig rod. <laughs> this is the second fish I, I got my bait rod with me, and I was going to drop it down here and just see if I could vertical jig it under me, because I'm, I'm marking a lot of bait here on the graph. I'll show you here in a second. But... Uh, this is the second time now I have pulled that rod out. And as soon as I do, I catch a catfish. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I've been doing wrong the last couple days. <laughs> Whatever it takes, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. I'll keep putting enough time into it to do it. All right, this one here is another one about. I'll get him up here. He's Maybe a little bigger than the last one. Maybe slightly anyway. He's one of them old fun sizers. Yeah, man. All right, man. Bring that known in here. I think that's the biggest one of the morning. And, oh, goodness. Boy, he's wild, too. You can see I got my board here with me. Some of us got a little competition going here this weekend. I'm trying to beat some of these fellas. I have had a hard time, <laughs> like I mentioned, but today is much, much improved. Yeah, folks, for those of you that care about that thing, that one's about 34 inches right there. Yeah, y'all, that's the biggest one for the last couple days, 34 inches. Uh, I don't ever weigh these fish. I just don't care about that kind of thing, but this one ain't very heavy. He's a, a very skinny 34-inch fish, but... It was a fun fight, again, on the skipjack body section. I'm gonna let him go, and I'm gonna take my other camera here and show you what I'm doing here on the graph. So there's a point that comes off right here, and there's an old gully right here, this old creek channel, that I'm anchored down in, 36 feet, water temp's 58. There's some marks right through here, and I've seen more bait working in and out through here, so I had uh, brought my bait rods with me today, and. I thought, well, I got them here with me. I'm just going to make a few casts here with them jigs, let them sink all the way down to the bottom, kind of work it up, and see, see what that bait is down there. And every time I pick up that dang rod, I get hit. So that's the secret to success out here. It ain't the, the bait that you use. It ain't where you're at. It's picking up your bait rod. That's when you're going to get a catfish to bite. There's another skipjack body piece what all three of them fish have eat this morning, so I'm going to keep using it until it quits working for me. The uh, only bait I got with me today, though, is skipjack, so that's what we're going with. We're just going to mix up the cuts. I kind of feel like I need to switch one of these other two rods out with another body piece since that's what they're eating, but I've got so much confidence in those head pieces. Those are just big fish baits, and, you know, again, that one there is a smaller head piece, and this one over here is a bigger head piece, so... I kind of want those two options down there just in case we do get a, a movement of large fish come through this area. But right now, it's that body piece that keeps getting hit, so we'll go with it. 
Look at this rod right here. Well, you know, you got your golly whopper on when he's doing that. Let's pick up on him. I think he's hooked. Either. There he is. He came up in the water column. I thought he had just flung my bait off. He's gonna take off now with everything he's got. Well, look at him go now. But he's gonna pull now. He's going every which way. Look at here. He's went back here and got my other line. All that swimming around. Oh, that's a striper, y'all. That explains why he hit it kind of funny. And why he just all of a sudden took off. That's a nice surprise. I ain't caught none of these in a while. He's going to get out and look at him go now, man. He hit that bait like a dink, just kind of pecking on the thing. And then he just shot off on me. I don't get a whole lot of strappers when I'm suspending baits, but every once in a while, I ain't got, I ain't lucked into a strapper in uh, probably a couple months, I guess, unless there's one I ain't, I ain't remembering off the top of my head. It's end of November here now. I think days, I don't know, 28th or something, 29th. Yeah, that's a, that's a welcome surprise here, y'all. It's going to take me a minute to tame him because that's actually a pretty good striper. Heck yeah, he's got got in this line here, but he ain't, he ain't all wrapped up in it. I may be able to just... I may be able to finagle him out of this other line here. Goodness. Let's bring that thing in, man. Buddy, that's a good striper. He did not fight nearly as hard as what you would expect on a big fish like this. <laughs> that's a nice surprise. Awesome, man. This right here makes it worthwhile for the, the all day just disaster that yesterday was. <laughs> nice. Let me throw him on the board here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We'll get a quick length on him since I got this board set up, and then we'll let him go. And guys, that right there is a whopper. That's over 41 inches. Nice. Let's let that boat get by there. We don't want to show them that we catch a fish here. All right. One last look here, and we're going to revive him and let him go. Our water temps are cooling off now so these fish do a lot better in the hot summer months they'll go belly up on you in a hurry but now that we're cooling off it's going to be a lot easier on them all right oh goodness he's ready to go hold him here got a little bit of current out here today so i'm just going to let it just hold him here let that current go through his gills let him recuperate almost have to even the water's cooler right now you still need to revive these things or get them back in the water as quick as you can there he goes <clears throat> i'm getting choked up about it I'm getting choked on my own slobber all right guys well that was not the fish that i'm out here to get today but that was a good time. I'll tell you though, he acted just like a dang small, uh, small blue cat or channel cat. I mean, it was just, I saw my rod tip bouncing up and down. And I'm like, we don't even want to catch that one. And then I picked up on him there and it just all of a sudden took off. But he really didn't fight as hard as what I would have expected for a, a striper that size. They're normally the hardest fighting fish that we have around here. I mean, they are just strong fighters. Man, I'm happy to get him though. That's the first one in a while. That made my day. Here we go. Here we go on this, on this back rod here. Boy, it's pulling. I can't get the rod of the rod holder, man. Goodness gracious, he's a pulling. That's on that big headpiece. I've been waiting on this rod to go down, y'all. I've been waiting all morning on this. That's 
been slow out here for the last couple hours. Got one little old dink blue since that striper come along. I just ain't been nothing going other than just small blues and channels down there chewing on my baits. Put enough time into spots like this. I know I'm a broken record when I say this type of thing, but get these points and creek mouths and ledges. You soak baits long enough, fish will move through. Boy, it's a pulling right there now. That's what I'm doing out here this morning, just putting in a little time. Yesterday was such a lousy day. Had, you know, high pressure, bluebird skies. This wasn't an ideal day to be fishing. Them, them beautiful days usually don't offer great fishing, but today it's, it's overcast. We got some rain it's supposed to come in this evening and tonight. So it's a lot better, a lot better conditions. And that's a nice blue. Biggest one of the day right there. Okay, bring him on in. I'll set him down just a second there. He, he did a couple laps around my front line, so I'm just gonna untangle it. In case he's got friends or family working through, my other bait will be up there. Untangled and ready to go with him. Got my hook and my glove. All right, you can see what them dinks have done. They just been down there, just a pecking. But, I've got a good fish right here. Yeah, buddy, look at that. That one's worth sitting out here a few hours this morning. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I got my board here for this little competition thing, and uh, I'll throw him on there for the handful of you that care about that kind of that kind of nonsense. Yeah, folks, that one right there will go over 38 inches, about 38 and a half. Nice. Yeah, buddy. Over 38 inch blue cat right there. Nice, man. Well, it was a fun time too. That's why I had that head piece out. That head, other than just some dink taps, it ain't been messed with all of our action today. That's come on the body pieces. But I'll leave them out there just in case because when the bigger fish come along, they love them head pieces. All right, he gone. See ya, buddy. He's out of here. We're just an inconvenience to his day. He'll be here next time. Yeah, y'all, it's been, it's been slow out here. I just, uh, ain't much going on. I converted my bait rod here, uh, which I, you all know how I am about that. Back in the summer, I was using my bait rod there during the spawn, just messing around, hooked a whopper and broke off. So I ain't a big fan of doing that, but I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna put me another bait on there. And just get a fourth line out since the action's been so sparse, but uh, yeah, I'm a lot more optimistic now. That's just how it's gonna be. There's just gonna be fish periodically moving through this area, and if I'm on the water when they come through, and I got baits right down there in their face as they swim by, I got a chance of catching them. I'm gonna take a look at this here. I may switch this headpiece out. This thing, it was kinda chewed up. Yeah, it's all chewed up. All that meat off there is gone. I'm going to switch it out. We'll put a fresh one on there. There it is. Down it goes. Send it down there. It's on a Carolina rig. It's what I like to use when I'm anchored down and suspending baits. I'll let my sinker hit bottom here. Reel down and lift up. Stick up my rod holder. Well, don't look now, y'all, but I think I may have another one on right here. Yeah, he's got down there and got hooked up on that body piece. Bring him up here. He ain't gonna be very big. Oh, it's a dang old channel cat. 
That's an old channel cat. We don't want to see them ever. Dadgummit. Look what he's done to my bait, too. Folks, these things get down there. Yeah, he just threw it off. There wasn't much left of it, though. Yeah, I hear you, old channel cat. I think I got some action here on this rod. I'm gonna... Yeah, he's on there. If we can get him in, I think it's just gonna be another little one. Yeah, another one of them danged old channel cats. There he went too. Well, look what he's done to my bait. Them things have been down there just chewing. That's what's moved in here, y'all. Them old channel cats, so. I think everybody there watching at home, I think that's about as good a cue as any for me to wrap up this video. It's been a fun morning out here and it's, uh, you know, a good, a good redemption after yesterday with all that went wrong. Come out here, get that nice blue cap and get that unexpected catch there with the, with the big striper. I love those things. They're a lot of fun to catch and things can steal my bait anytime. But I think I'm going to pack up and get on out of here. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.